Hey Adam, just wanted to uh, chime in here and give you an idea of what I did on my closet cold chester for the VFD. Uh, just so you know, to Scott Tenyon and uh, Stan Zinkowski, along with a variety of people, uh, chimed in to help me get to where I am uh, with this. Uh, I chose to deviate a little bit from uh, from some of the uh, some of the um, information that was given and some of the advice that was given. But this is what I what I did. Uh, I'll give you the the pros and cons on that and how it's been working for me. So in this old Klaus and Colchester, the original way the wiring was set up is this lever here was basically, it was an analog on off switch, right? Um, up is on, down is off, along with braking, right? So it does have a, um, a, a break in here, a manual shoe style brake, just like you might have on your drum brakes on a vehicle. This lever here, is for the speed. I do have a six wire uh, motor just like you have. This is for the speed. So right now it's in uh, off or the neutral state, right? It's got a low and high forward and then a low and high reverse. Okay, sorry for the shaky cam. Um, you may not be following all of it. You know, some of these guys, sorry to hear this every single time I'm, I'm on, but I just had back surgery and on top of that, a shot move right before it. So everything's just kind of crammed in here for right now. So I'm just doing my best to show you to try and help. Um, but basically 1700 and, and uh, 3400 RPMs uh, based on the uh, on this part of the lever. Now what I did, because I disconnected the on off switch, what I actually did is I ran, a little pan up here to this, a remote for the VFD. So I've got you know, stop in my e stop here, right? Your start, which ramps it up, um, would be similar to flipping the lever up uh, to start, as well as I added a potentiometer. Um, I didn't do any overdrive on the potentiometer, I'm basically just doing underdrive, so uh, basically allowing me to dial the um, dial the RPM down rather than. Uh, um, worrying about trying to dial it up and down from here. I didn't add anything like the remote display on this. Uh, frankly, um, I don't do a whole lot on, on uh, you know, trying to be exactly precise with this. I know if my given speed's too fast and I'm getting some harmonics or chatter, I'll just dial it down until it works, right? So, uh, but you can get really fancy with this. I chose just to go real simple start, stop, and you know, be able to adjust speed. So let's uh, stop the video. I'm gonna flip it around to the other side of the lathe here so you can see the VFD and uh, talk a little bit about uh, how that worked and the gotchas that you're gonna have to watch for on this. Okay, sorry, I didn't take the screws off this thing for you, um, but let's start with the AB uh, selector. That is that uh, uh, five position uh, uh, lever that uh, I showed you, The basically the neutral position in the upright and then the you know forward low forward high reverse low re uh, reverse high speeds right uh that's this guy this guy is where your six wires are all coming in right and then from here it goes back down out uh depending on how you're originally uh wired there's going to be something that controls the on off part of it and the other part that goes down to your motor itself right so your six wires were here um, effectively, what I did was I gutted all of the analog stuff that was in here and went with the VFD. And so the VFD does a couple of things for me here. Um, what was nice and simple for this is I basically had you know, the, um, my 220 single phase coming in, just a couple of wires. I had my three power uh, feeds that are coming from the six, uh, the, the AB uh, selector here, I just had the three because this is doing all of the, 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 the patching, you know, to get the phases right and, and you know, get everything correct. But I basically just had the three output wires coming from this coming out, right? So basically, um, power coming in, or I'm sorry, not the output, the input wires from the AB. The, uh, um, the input wires that go from the power, the VFD, in here. And then the output and everything else was already, the three from here were already run to the motor and everything was set. So I didn't have to do anything special with that. Um, and then the other thing that this particular VFD does, which I'm pretty sure yours will do as well, sorry, trying to get down here low enough, is you know, you've got your low voltage connections in here. 
And so that's what allowed me to connect up the um, the e stop, the start, and and um, and potentiometer. So if you look, I'm not sure how well we can see in here on some of the wiring. It is definitely not Stan Zinkowski quality wiring. Sorry guys, um, I don't have everything quite as pretty in there. I was uh, just trying to get it to work, thinking that I'd go back and fix it, and I didn't, obviously. But um, so you can see, you've got your power coming in over here. You've got your wires coming back out uh, for the uh, that goes into the AB switch, and then from the AB switch back down to the um, down to the motor, and then you've got your connectors in here. And you notice I actually in here also I added a um, a resistor for uh, the stopping, right? So that it takes any of the uh, any of the electricity that would have been generated by this motor, the the um, the momentum of the motor that wants to keep moving forward after I press stop, it it basically effectively turns into a generator. And so I wanted that power to have to go, you know, a place to go. And so I added a resistive uh, uh, or a resistor to um, to uh, give that that overflow and allow for slightly faster stopping speeds without worrying about burning up all of my equipment. So let's stop here and talk about caveats. Okay, so the advice you've already gotten in this thread, and if you go back through some of the other threads in there, is you know, I mean, it's it's amazing. Keep in mind. Some of these guys, uh, you know, they're electrical engineers. They, you know, do this stuff every day. Me, I can read a schematic, but um, you know, basically, I leaned on these guys quite a bit to uh, to figure out what I was going to do. The one and biggest area of concern on all of this, uh, and it's already been noted in here, is you don't want to change this on the fly. Right, if you have power going to the VFD, and what I mean by that is you've come up here and you've pressed the start button. You are in anything other than stop. Do not change this. Okay? We don't want to uh, we don't want to overload that VFD. We don't want to cause problems with it. Um, it will overload, it will, you know, you can burn it up. I don't know the right terms for it. Uh, someone will chime in, I'm sure, but effectively it is uh, what we would consider bad, right? Um, so the process I use when I am changing my gears and I need to change the actual speed is I've gone from, I'm running to something. And unless I'm just changing the potentiometer, I stop and let the machine come to a full stop, right? The, the VFD, you know, says E, right, for E stop, right? There's no, no RPMs at all. Once I'm in that state, I come down here and I change to either my low or high or reverse or whatever I'm going to do. At which point I am now clear to come back up here and start the machine again. As long as you keep that in mind, you're not going to mess anything up, right? Just don't have it running and make changes on the fly, right? That's the biggest caveat. Um, you know, I, do, I did some extra grounding on, on some of this stuff and you know, things like that. Um, these guys can all point you in the right direction, but I just wanted to I, try and give you a little bit of information about, uh, about the VFD. It's not anywhere near as intimidating as it might seem when you first get it. I know how I felt when I first got this thing and trying to figure it out. And once the light bulb came on, it was like, oh, that's all I gotta do? Okay, good. And I got it wired up and I'm happy. It's been working great ever since. So uh, once again, thanks to all the guys that helped me get this far and hopefully I'm able to pass this on to you and help you get your machine up and running as well.